before I, and hopefully my internet so far, knock on wood today, so far I'm good. I'm thinking it's the, the heat wave that's affecting my internet. <laughs> hopefully I'm good and I don't have to kill my video today. So before we jump into the momentum stuff, I kind of paired both momentum and workman. And so the video that I'm going to show you guys is available through the training center, the workman training center, and it's inside of the slam component. So I know Kim's taken slam with me before in the past. Um, and I know Jan, I think you took BAM last summer. Um, so we've run a couple, workman has a couple different products in there. You guys have access to that. 24 seven online. So if you want to sit in your underwear at 2 a.m. and binge watch some BAM, you have that or some slam or ramp, you have that as an option. So it's good stuff in there. Um, I am going to be running a ramp live class through work or through um, Remax headquarters. So pretty excited to be kicking that off in August. In August. So it's going to be fun. Um, but that being said, all of you guys have done open houses, right? So we're just here to kind of fine tune and get some better ways to do it. Okay, awesome. Except for Jill. Jill's our newest person. So welcome, Jill. We'll give her some love because she's brand new and it's like drinking out of a fire hose, as we all know, right? So you came off mute, Jill. I don't know. She had something to say. So um, and Jan can relate. She's she's only been here a year. So she relates to your uh, the, the, the feeling of being new. So that being said, any questions or comments before I show you guys this quick video? Nope. Good. OK. Let me do a share screen. Oh, hold on. I got one person jumping in. It's going to be our token mail for the day. Kevin jumping in. Um, okay. okay. Let's do. I'm sorry, guys. I got windows open. I need to get to the right screen here. Hi, my name is Rick Jiha and welcome to SLAM. We're going to be talking today about open houses on steroids. And I'm really excited about this subject and I'll tell you why. Because open houses over the 37 plus years that I've been in the real estate business have had a good name and a bad name. And I'll tell you this, open houses are here to stay. Let me tell you a little bit about why I say that. In 1990, I hit what was for the first time in my real estate career, one of the worst markets I'd ever been in. In 1989, I'd sold 67 houses, and here I was in April and May of 1990, and I'd only sold three so far. And I was looking for answers on how to correct my business and how to fix it. A gentleman came up to me one day and started talking to me about this open house on steroids idea, and I instantly grabbed onto it because I was so impressed with the concept and what went behind it. Now think about the past. Think about other people that you've seen holding open houses in the real estate business. Think about yourself and the last time you held an open house. Now. I started managing real estate offices in 1993, and I can tell you on Sundays I'd be in the office and I would see somebody at 1215 going, oh my gosh, my open house is starting in 45 minutes, and they'd be running through the office asking if anybody had signs that they could borrow. That is not a well-prepared event. And simply put, what you put into event is going to always be equal to what you're going to get out of an event. And if you haven't prepared for your open house, then there's no way it's going to be successful for you. Open houses are a big expenditure of time. And if you're going to do that, you owe it to your family. You owe it to yourself to make sure that you are getting a return on that investment. So when I heard about the open house on steroids idea, I was overwhelmed with the concept and the amount of preparation that went into it. But what I was also not surprised about, if that much attention went into the preparation and detail of executing the open house on steroids, I was not surprised when I saw him show me his stack of leads that he was getting from every open house he did. Let's go into it a little bit. One of the great things about being involved with Workman Success Systems as a coach is that as a real estate agent, I'm constantly learning. And what's great is we have prepared documents and we have a wonderful set of documents around the entire open house. So think about the past about open houses. One of the things is we're often planning them on really short amount of time. It's, it's Wednesday, Wednesday, you realize your listing hasn't sold yet. You call the seller and you say, gosh, we're going to do an open house. This is all done much differently. We're going to start planning our open house on steroids a week to two weeks out, preferably a week and a half to two weeks at the very least. 
we're going to have it planned out because we have so much we're going to do. First, we have to plan that we're going to do the open house. We have to know that we have a listing coming up that we're going to do it. We don't want the, the open house to be scheduled so close to the date that we list the home that we're not prepared with all of our marketing. We want to have the right pictures. We want to have the right setup. And certainly, we want to be prepared for this crowd that we're going to attract. So I want you to be thinking about that. All of the things I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be changing your mindset on how you've executed open houses before. Today, it really is a dramatic paradigm shift when it comes to open houses. So after we've determined the open house, we have lots that we're going to do. We're going to send out open house invitations. We're going to create those. We have a document that shows you exactly how to create them. What's great is the document is editable, which means we can make it customized to your team and your business. What's great about that? There's going to be many ways to do it. Some people are still relying on snail mail or what we call regular mail. That is having them mailed to the houses in the areas. When we were doing them back in the day, we were having our team knock on 50 doors a day for five days before the open houses, in, in essence, inviting face-to-face -face at least 250 people to the open house. There's many different ways to do this, but the bottom line is you have to invite more people to the open house. And that can be, like I said, through mail, through door knocking, and through all kinds of other, today, social media and the use of Facebook and other types of social media to get the word out about this open house. Now, remember this. I'm going to keep saying things during, out my, during my conversation with you about open house on steroids. The more you understand that preparation is key and the more you take seriously the preparation, the better results you're going to get. Now, once you've got those invitations out, we've got to start really doing some planning. We want our lender, we want a licensed real estate agent, one of our buyer's agents, or possibly even me from the team, and one other person, what we call an employee, that doesn't necessarily have to be licensed to help us with setup, putting up signs, etc. Now, one of the things that we like to do is when we're, pa when we're doing open house on steroids, one of the key, notice I said key, one of the key things about the open house on steroids is the number of open house signs used. I remember sharing this with many people in the past, and I've had them say, what? You use 20 to 25 open house signs for one open house? As a matter of fact, we do. But they're not all the traditional big open house signs. A lot of times we have one that we just put in the lawn, and it says open house, little whiteboards on them, little mini whiteboards that you can write the address on, and all kinds of creative signs. Now, we're going to have photos of those for you and information on how to order those in the document that we give you. So as you can see, it's a big undertaking, and yet the results are going to be astounding. Stay tuned. So besides the open house signs, asking permission, you can even ask permission of the sellers in the area if you can put one of those open house signs in their lawn. And a lot of times, it begins a point of con. conversation when you're door knocking or when you're making calls about inviting people to this open house. It's an absolutely wonderful idea. Now, one of the great things about this is with advanced preparation, you want to do four of these in one weekend. Now, I want to give a lot of credit to one of our master coaches at His name's Mark Seiden, and he's from Westchester County, New York. He's amazing. And he's the guy who really came up with a really great platform with uh, Open House on Steroids. Can you guys not hear it? Regularly in business. Is it? Okay. I'm going to. It's freezing a lot. Okay. I'm going to turn my video off and hopefully. That will help it. A lot of success. Now, what I love is talking to Mark. We find out that he gets it all prepared, and we do two, four of these two-hour open houses. They are 11.30 to 1.30, and then again, 2.30 to 4.30, both on Saturday and Sunday. And like I said, it really, really brings in a great result. Now, we've got the time set. We've got our people figured out. Now, there are some other really key factors that are kind of fun. And that is being super, super prepared for what happens at the open house. Now, you want to start by having a pre-prepared open house kit. The open house kit, of course, is going to have flyers on the property. It's going to have name badges. It's going to have uh, referral sheets. It's going to have buyer information sheets and many other little documents. And we're going to share those with you again in the information that we supply you about this. Now, one of the great things about this uh, open house on steroids is that typically there is a table set up 
that you have to get past before you can get into the home. There's a reason for this. In fact, one of the key control factors of an open house on steroids is this table. What do I mean by that? Well, myself, let's say me, one of my buyer's agents or one of the people on my team and the lender are all sitting at that table. We have a little sign on the left that says, entering this open house is not a privilege, <laughs> it's a right. Excuse me, it's not a right, it's a privilege. Sorry, I messed that part up. Now, why do I say that? A lot of people want to storm into open houses believing that because you have an open house sign, anybody can go in. But what I love what Mark Sign's done is he's taken this to the next level. He said, we owe it to our sellers to be responsible for their home and responsible for the belongings in the home. So what does this do? That sets the people coming into your open house, the neighbors, the other people who might be thinking selling their, home, their homes in the future and buyers with the idea that, oh, wait a minute, I don't get to just go traipsing through this open house. It's going to be in a controlled environment. Now, keep in mind, we have to have the house set up. Now, think about this controlled environment. We want the drapery zone. We want the lights on. We want it looking really good. In the winter, we want the fireplace on. We want it feeling warm and cozy. In the summer, we want doors open, a breeze coming through. We want it looking nice, a little soft music playing in the background. Nothing that is distracting, ladies and gentlemen, certainly no television on. And we can talk about nightmares that I've experienced with TVs being on during open houses. So all of these are preparatory for having an open house on steroids that will knock it dead. Like you'll have so much client business coming out of it, you'll be surprised. So the beautiful thing at this table is that you've got the table set with a tablecloth and you typically will have some flowers and you've got the little sign on the left saying welcome to the home. It's not a right, it's a privilege. Everything is set up so that you absolutely get and so does the people coming up that this is going to be very special. We get their information down on our sign-in sheet, and then they are introduced and taken through the home for a tour. If they have been pre-signed up by a real estate agent that my buyers are coming to your open house, then we have either our employee or one of the buyer's agents host them through the house and give them a tour. They're not, they don't have to be a licensed real estate agent because they're just touring them through the home, and they already have representation of another realtor who's warned us that they are coming. Now, if they are a prospect for us, we're certainly going to take extra good care of them and make sure that we're working with a buyer's agent or with me personally. And I'll tell you why. When a lot of the sellers in the neighborhood see this open house on steroids, do you know what they're thinking? They're thinking, oh my gosh, this guy goes to a lot of trouble for his open houses. If I ever sell my house, I want him to help me. This right there is probably one of the key things that you can think about as it relates to doing open houses on steroids. The system is amazing. It takes planning and it takes effort. If you've been watching other SLAM videos, you will know that the main thing, the main focal point about every single video is systemization, operational excellence, making sure everything is executed by a plan, and this open house on steroids is no different. It's time that you take control of your open house business. This can become a key way to attract a lot of new buyers and, believe it or not, sellers. So here's what I want you to think about before I close is this. We're going to supply you with documents and PDFs and everything you need in editable fashion so that you can create your own open house on steroids plan. And it will be systematized and easy to follow. The bottom line is, is it starts with you, the leader of the team, the person who is going to create that difference. And I really want you thinking about how will I step up to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, you can blow up your business, use this as another pillar of excellent lead generation as long as you take this seriously and move it into your business with a plan. I'll look forward to hearing how amazing you did with Open House on Steroids. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to turn my video back on and see how long I have. So if, it, if I start breaking up, let me know and I'll turn it back off. So um, I have some thoughts about that. If you guys have any thoughts or questions, comments, anything about the video? I love how he positioned the table right in front of the entrance to, you know, be sort of the focal point as you walk in. So I thought that was really smart. It's something I hadn't thought of. I'm usually in the living room or at the kitchen table. And I just, that just resonated right away. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, remind me, and I'll send you guys, um, let me write it down, surveillance. We have a surveillance form that was created um, that I can send you guys. Just print it out. Every time you do an open house, I would just laminate it. And every time you do an open house, put it on the front door. It says that this is a privilege, not a right. You're going to be asked to sign in. I mean, I've done that in open houses. It's It makes it a lot easier because you're putting them on alert when they get to that front door that they're going to be asked to sign in. And so when you say it's for everybody's security purposes, it kind of changes the vibe there. So um, one thought I had just listening to him talk about music and TV and stuff. And if you're doing an open house during the football season, it's totally appropriate to have the game on. Um, I wouldn't have it be blaring, right? It's like you're having a, you know, a football party, but if a husband or, you know, significant others, I guess it doesn't have to be a husband, a male, if people are out and about and they are into this, whatever season is on, whether that's baseball, football, basketball, um, they appreciate, you know, the, having a, the TV on so they can get updates. Right. So I think it's appropriate again, within reason, uh, making sure that your sound is okay. And, and, you know, light music is good. Um, of course, you're not going to play like Lamb of God or something crazy death metal, but, you know, appropriate <laughs> Baroque style classic rocks, probably even OK. Um, you know, something that, again, makes them feel comfortable where they're going to want to linger and hang out and, and chat with you a little bit. Plus, if a particular song might also be an icebreaker, right? If something comes on and you hear them, you know, humming the song, you can kind of hum along with them. Right. And so uh, so those are just some thoughts I had that kind of countering that. If you go into the training center where this video is at, just, you know, type in open house on steroids or just type in open house and all of the open house videos that are related to workman training will show up inside of this particular video, though, is a download for. But what do I do before the open house? What do I do during the open house? And what do I do after? And I would encourage you guys to have an open house tote, right? That's got all your stuff in it that you need. Some extra toilet paper in case the house doesn't have any, um, you know, the candle that you're going to burn, you know, all those things you want to have in that tote. So it's ready to go. And also just your stuff you're going to hand out, right? The things about you, your, open, you know, your sign in sheet, all of that. So it's easy and you systematize it. So when you do an open house, you don't forget one piece of it, right? Uh, we're going to go to the momentum materials. But one thing that's not in any of the materials is, the social media stuff. So you, I mean, you can create an event if you want to on, on, on your Facebook pages and boost that if you want to. Um, you can, but, but I, I think the probably the, one of the most effective guys and we sit in this house open with a nice photo of it. Then if you're doing it Saturday morning, go live on Friday or record a video and post it if you're not comfortable going live, but be in the property right? So go, if it's got a killer kitchen or a killer backyard, go live from there and say, Hey, it's Audrey from UX Professionals. Guys, I'm going to be sitting in this house open tomorrow. I just want you to give you a sneak peek. I'm going to drop the address in the comments. Hope to see you tomorrow. Right. And then you can do it again. Saturday morning, get there, go live again. Hey guys, just a reminder. I'm going to be here from blah, 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 blah time. Give, give a quick little pan of whatever is the money shot in the house, come by and see me, right? Um, Steve Cushing is one of our agents. His Facebook page, if you're not friends with him, is public. He probably hasn't posted one because he's been gone all summer. Aren't we jealous of him being in Michigan for the summer? Steve is his Facebook, his Facebook videos. Um, they are not professional. It's just Steve with his camera and he walks the property and they're very, very effective. And so I know a lot of us get uncomfortable, myself included. I don't even like to watch these videos back because I don't like the way I sound. I don't know how y'all listen to me, but I don't like the way I sound. So I totally understand the resistance to that. Um, but, you know, again, do we want to turn our open house into a, into a spectacle that drives leads or are we going to be uncomfortable in the fact that we don't like the sound of our voice? So, and, you know, Steve's real quick, like he's just literally, Hey, it's Steve from Remax Professional. I'm going to give you a tour of this house, turns the camera around and that's it. So he's on the camera himself for a very short period of time. Um, if you're totally just not okay with that at all, then, you know, I mean, at least do some kind of a video that's a tour of the property. Maybe you're not in it, I guess. Um, I would still encourage you to be in it. The thing about video, you guys, is that you know, video gives um, leads and online people an opportunity to engage you and get to know you, right? So by the time they do reach out, they already feel like, can, like they know you because they've watched your videos, right? They see your personality, they hear your voice, they hear your, your body language through those videos. And so video is a way to break down that barrier and connect with strangers a lot faster because they get to know you before you get to know them, okay? Um, all right, a couple of thoughts on that. Let me go do a share screen of the actual PowerPoint. And Jill, this is recorded, so I know you've got to bounce here in a minute. So we'll, you, um, we'll make sure you can watch the replay. All right. So going into the class materials here for 
uh, what we have for momentum is you know, we've seen similar slides to this, right? What, what is, what do we want to do here? We want to teach you a proactive approach to doing open houses. And, you know, if you think that open houses don't work and that's your vibe, then open houses aren't going to work. Um, we talked about this a little bit at the end of our gas call yesterday. I kind of wanted to smack Nate around a little bit, <laughs> but perception is reality, right? What we focus on, we attract more of. And so if you want to A killer open house have a killer attitude she's a realtor and she strips down to her skivvy she's scrubbing the house and getting the house ready to go right and she uh is my internet being wonky again let me turn my video off and she opens up the uh she opens the curtains and she says a very grand statement i will sell this house today right and so do we have that attitude when we go out to do an open house Am I, am I being that open to attract business to come to me? Because again, what we resist persists. And when, we, when we're in scarcity or we think things don't work, we actually cut off the flow of, of abundance to us, okay? Um, so while I can appreciate being realistic about knowing things in the market and the data, I also think we just need to know it. What's your slice of the pie, Kristen? How many houses do you want to sell and how much money do you want to make? And then freaking go do it, right? Don't worry about what the stats say or how many homes are not on the market. Just go do it, right? Find out what that is for you and go do it. Um, okay, so getting into, so I'm gonna kind of fast track some of this stuff, you guys, because I wanna get into the meat of actual the actual open house. Um, and there's a bunch of scripts and dialogues in here too, so which I don't have time to read all of them to you. But uh, okay, so the consequences of being a lead generator, right? We need to be proactive. You guys have heard me say this many times now, I don't want you getting out of bed and wondering who needs your services today. Um, and so tracking that stuff, making sure you have all your leads in a place where it's easy to go back and follow up and say, okay, I'm not going to, no one's, the balls aren't going to get dropped because I've got my people in a central place that reminds me to follow up with them. So if we were to look at phase one here and you to work 45 weeks of the year, so that a lot for some vacation, you did two open houses every week, that's 90 open houses. If you had an average of five, which is probably true, right? If you're going to have some that you're going to get skunked. The goal with this class is that you have less open houses that you get skunked, right? Uh, and that would give you an additional 450 talks. If you could only set 10% of those into appointments, that's still an additional 45 appointments. If half of them showed up, it's 23 meetings. And then if only half of them actually did business with you, it results in 10 transactions. I don't know about you, but 10 transactions times, you know, what is our average commission about 9,000 right now? That's a good day just from doing open houses. So, and this doesn't, this doesn't, you know, include all the other stuff that comes from that. You sell a house, now you get referrals from that, right? So there's a lot more um, opportunity than just the 10 transactions is what I'm getting at, okay? But being effective and having a plan that you fire off the same every time. Um, so what do we need? We need a prospect, right? We need to have a property that we're going to sit open. Um, you know, Nate mentioned this a little bit on gas. I think it was gas or where somewhere he mentioned about not sitting properties that are luxury. I think that just depends on the product and I think it depends on the neighborhood. Um, I had a gal that I coached in the Virginia market. She's in Richmond, Virginia. She sat a multi-million dollar property open and I had that same attitude that why would anybody look at a multi-million dollar property at an open house? Not only you guys, she, she double-ended it from a lead that came through and then she listed the guy's house. So it resulted in three, three, three sides basically and almost $3 million worth of real estate. If she had listened to me, that might not have happened. Okay. So I think you have to evaluate the property. Um, you know, if you sat in on Tina Tamaru's uh, presentation last week, she talked about the need for two to $3 million properties in the East Valley. There just is a, de a strong demand. And if you got to that property, um, you could go buy, you know, I would invest in one of those flags. Yeah. Um, you know, each office has a Remax balloon that you can check out, which, yeah. Is my internet being Sarah, bad? You, yeah, you just like, I probably like a whole good informative paragraph got lost. Okay. About, you were talking about um, uh, two to $3 million properties that are like in short supply. Could you repeat that? Yeah. So he was just saying, am I back now? You can hear me okay now? For now. Yeah. This is brutal. I can't, and I can't get the cable company out here till next week. So <laughs> um, they swear nothing's wrong with my internet. But anyway, so yeah, there's a strong demand. So I think when you're picking a property, um, I we had mentioned not doing luxury, but I think it depends on the product, right? And so I think you have to evaluate whether or not that's going to be a high traffic area. Does that make, did you guys got that now? Yeah. 
Okay. And I think location too, I don't want to have a property that requires, you know, 15 directional signs to get to it. So I think you have to take that into consideration as well. Um, each office has a Remax balloon that you guys can check out, but the property does need to have power because it does require to be plugged in, but it's super easy to do. Um, you could even get some of those flags. If it is, if you do want to put up 20 to 25 signs, go buy the cheapy open house signs that if they get picked up and thrown away, you're not, it's not your really expensive A-frames, right? Um, so certainly could do some additional stuff with some signage, okay? Um, and the Remax balloon does help. It helps a lot to get people to stop. So that's something to think about. In the class metros, you're going to get some dialogues, right? Some scripts and dialogues that, again, I'm probably not going to read to you, but they're, they're there. So what do I need to have? I need to obviously have some signs. Um, I need to have my guest registry, my the home criteria. Go preview the home. Obviously, if you're going to do a live, uh, go preview the house so you know what it looks like. I would also preview homes that are for sale around it if there are any. If it's a house where there's new construction, go tour the new construction so you know what your competition is. OK, um, and so preview the other houses. Why is that? If someone comes through and this house doesn't work for them, but there's a house around the corner, I'm putting a be right back sign on my open house. I'm going to go show that property if I can to them. I can convert better, Leslie, if I know the inventory. Right. And I can go out there and look at other stuff. And so don't rely on your, you know, some, I had an agent rely on her and her laptop and it crashed or the Internet went out. So she, she didn't have access to everything that was in the MLS to so make sure that you take precautions for that. Print, you know, print out a one liner of properties that are in the area that fit that that same home. OK, make sure you know what the comps are, because if you get a nosy neighbor that comes through and they, you know, rip your butt because the house is overpriced or underpriced you want to be prepared for that right so run the comps okay um a clipboard with your um feedback sheet so how many of you guys are using a feedback form in your open house where the, the potential person okay Kristen is okay so this idea is on a clipboard and i have one if you want it send me an email um i'll send it to you so we just it's a form that you have them fill out as they're walking around to give you feedback on the property it's a way to close um, it gets them to engage you and most people will give you feedback. Um, and so the more time that you spend with them, the more chance you have to convert them, right? Um, think about a good uh, a good uh, murder mystery show. They always keep the, 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 the bad guy on the line as long as they can, right? And so it's kind of the same concept here. And that feedback form one, if it's your listing, gives you good feedback to your seller and two, it's a way to close, okay? Um, the MLS sheet, tax record, of course, we talked about pricing and then having thank you notes that if you get an address, you can actually write a thank you note to that person after they come through the open house. At the very least, get the phone number and an email, and then I would do a video text. On So if it's a Saturday open house on Sunday, I would send a video text and say, hey, Jan, it was really nice meeting you at 123 Elm Street. Please let me know if there's anything, any other questions that you have about that property and, and how I can help you with any other properties. OK, your competition isn't doing that. And if they were at a bunch of open houses, they might not remember you. All right, so something different to do for your follow. -up. Oh goodness, what was that? That was weird. Did you guys hear that? Well, oh, that was something screeched. <laughs> that sh sh uh, was shocking, huh? Sounds that like a ghost. Me. Yeah, startled me. Okay. Uh, um, all right, so page six, we're talking about core values, and so core values of an entrepreneur. So um, you guys can take a minute to read through these. For some of you who have taken momentum with me, this isn't your first time seeing the core entrepreneur beliefs. And so personally, number two is, is a mantra I say every day is that I live in a world of abundance. Um, when, when we have a crap sandwich for a day, if we can shift our thinking and say, I live in a world of abundance, it does help, right? Because you can't have low vibe and high vibe existing in the same environment, okay? Um, so again, I, I would print these out, the whole page six, and just every day, um, you know, if you want to go so far as to laminate it and hang it in your shower so that it forces you to look at it every day, um, I have done that with affirmations and had them hanging in my shower. So not a bad thing to do, but when you sit down, at the very least, when you sit down to prospect, have this out, right? right? Have this form out, this page, and just read through all of these core beliefs and get your head set in the right spot. Same thing before going to an open house, right? Read through your affirmations. Um, so here's the sales beliefs. And so, um, you know, number four, I will not convert 100% of the leads I do not generate. Right? That's what we, that's what we got to do, right? Is we need to generate leads. We need to have relationships that generate mm -hmm. leads. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the buyer beliefs. So having beliefs around buyers. And so number two, motivated, qualified, and loyal people buy homes. Yes, right? We want to make sure we're going to test their motivation. Are they qualified or can they provide me proof of funds? And then are they going to be loyal to me? Now, number uh, five, an A buyer, or I'm sorry, number four, if they won't meet me, they're not a 
no, sorry, number five, A buyers deserve my immediate time and attention. I will take a C buyer out to show them a couple houses, you know, not necessarily schlepping across town to go to Buckeye at five o'clock on a Friday, but if it makes sense, Jan, to show one or two houses to someone to solidify that relationship, even though they may not be ready right this minute, I'm going to do that. Okay. We have a lot of relocation or second home people. And in the springtime, when we have all of our events going on, there's people here that are potential buyers, but they might be, you know, one or two years out because they are, you know, got to retire or whatever. It's okay to try to solidify that relationship and also to make them a buyer now, right? Somebody who I've done, I've sold houses to people before where they were going to move here in a couple of years, but we found the perfect home. They bought it, we rented it, and now they're they are set to go by the time they get ready to retire. So, while I do agree with number five, I think there's gray area there that requires us to think outside the box and use your intuition. And does it make sense to go show a couple houses to solidify the relationship? All right. So holding an effective open house. So selection, so priced according to your goals. Um, stuff that's in that sweet spot under under 400, probably gonna get a lot of traffic through, right? But the flip side is a buyer leads that you're gonna generate are gonna be buyers looking in that price range. Um, I've been working this little guy in the East Valley and <laughs> we just keep getting beat out because everything that's priced that, you know, three, 320, 350. So we're just getting beat out. So um, I wish they'd go to the West Valley because I could take them out and sell them a new home. <laughs> have no issues uh so, so so price according to your goals okay higher traffic area again do i, I don't want to have 20 directional signs to get there and then that it shows well inside and out i don't mind sitting a vacant home um i don't necessarily want to sit a vacant home alone i probably want to have someone there with me um but sometimes va vacant's easy right i don't have to mess with pets i don't have to mess with people don't have to make beds so vacant be, can be easy. Challenge of sitting in a vacant house, one is your safety. And two is that sometimes buyers lack imagination to be able to, to decorate the home in their head, okay? Um, but you have to choose which is gonna be best for you as far as what you're comfortable with. And most of our lenders will sit with you guys, right? Or we have agents in our office that will do open houses together and they just round robin the leads when they come through. So, and I think Leslie, don't you and Audrey do that kind of sit properties together? Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, okay. we, we, yeah, so yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's safety in numbers, right? So uh, preparation. So we want to advertise at least three days before you can put a sign up on the, or a rider on the sign that says it's going to be open Saturday from whatever time we want to inform 50 neighbors. So this is door knocking, right? The guy that from um, Rick Jiha on the video, he's been doing this 40, 45 years. And he just shared that because his son came into the business, he's now door knocking again, you know, and this is a guy who's got 40 years in the business. You wouldn't think he'd need to door knock. Right. Uh, so informing. So what we want you to do is 20 houses, 20, 20 houses across the street and then 10, 10 next to the house. Um, so, or I guess that's only 40, but between 40 and 50 doors, we want you to knock. And the script is really easy. You know, Hey, it's a great time to pick your name. Um, I'm going to be seeing this house open from whatever time, you know, invite your friends, invite your neighbors, you know, invite if, if you want anybody, you know, that's looking to buy, but you know, it's not a hard door knock. The other option you could do is if you're putting a sign on their property, ask permission. Hey, I'm sitting this house open. Is it okay if I put the sign on, on your sidewalk? Um, I've even gone so far as to say, um, you know, will you watch out for me? <laughs> I'm sitting in this open house. If you see anything funky going on. Does somebody Sarah? say yeah. yeah. Um, so you're, you're talking about the door knocking and then I, is it appropriate to leave a flyer there or if they don't answer the door? Sure. I think so. And do you just tape it on the door? Like, what do you do with it? Um, I don't know. What is everybody else doing? I guess you could tape it or just slide it, kind of tuck it in the, in the crack. Okay. Leslie, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, uh, because I've door knocked before, like all over Sun City, and I did that. I've only done it once, but I need to keep keep doing it. I really like it. Um, you know, each door, you know, is kind of different. So you just use your common sense. And I always leave uh, flyers, you know, tuck it in the door, um, put it on a bench with a rock on it or, you know, a little what whatever is handy. But yeah, it it's good practice for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I guess that's a way to get your feet wet too. If you're uncomfortable door knocking, you could just canvas with flyers if you're uncomfortable. Okay. Um, 
So we want to have our clipboards, at least one clipboard. I'd probably invest in a couple just in case you have a few people coming through at the same time. Um, then have your open house registry, uh, the tax record, the MLS sheet, and then um, any comps that we have for the area. How many are any of you guys using VoicePad? Call capture system. Okay. So you might think about putting that app on your phone. Um, and the reason being is that you each get, you know, Nate pays for this service and VoicePad's a call capture system. So if I call the number immediately, it captures your information and then I can press a number to be transferred through to you. And so the benefit of this at an open house, and if you ever um, shadowed Rose, uh, she does this, she'll take, she'll say, hey, would you like a realtor in your pocket? How would you like to have a realtor in your pocket? And then basically they say, well, what does that mean? And, and the cool thing about VoicePad is it holds real time. So if the property's off the market, it's not going to give any information. You can actually stalk them and see what they're looking at on the VoicePad. Lead, on VoicePad. So it's a great tool for conversion and giving them an option that isn't Realtor.com or Redfin or Zillow. Um, and then also you guys have your Remax app that you could give them too. Um, and it also stocks them and they can ping you properties and you can see what they're looking at. So those are two options. And, you know, Rose will literally take people's phone and say, here, let me, let me put this app on your phone. And she'll literally take their phone and do it right there at the open house. I know not all of us are that bold. <laughs> so, but at least, you know, at least get used to giving that information out to people so that they can use it. And hopefully it's a conversion tool for you. Okay. Um, and you, you get that to service. So talk to the, talk to, uh, your front desk person at whatever office you're at, they should hopefully be able to direct you or maybe even Veronica, uh, Veronica might be able to direct you in the right place if you don't have that yet. Um, so voice pad door knocking uh, in the MLS, I would also put that your property is going to be open. That way that gets syndicated out into all the different sites. Um, you know, you have the flyer, take the, um, take the flyers out of the flyer box if there's a flyer box, because we don't want people stopping and just kicking tires and not coming in, right? So if there's no flyer, it forces them to come into the house. Um, okay, so our action, this is on bottom of page seven, is put out plenty of signs, right? Make it easy to find. Um, if you're in a high wind area, you know, plan for that. I actually bought sandbags for my open houses because the first open house I did, my signs would not stay up. <laughs> it's very windy up here in the springtime. So I actually bought sandbags for my open house signs. So plan ahead so that, you know, you don't want to get done with your open house and realize that all your signs were blown down. Um, arrive early. Right. Get there early. Do not show up five minutes before. Um, and then because what might happen is sellers forget. Right. Things happen. Beds don't get made. Dishes get left in sinks. Plus, you want to go around and turn on the lights and, you know, the, the blinds and, you know, get your stuff set up. Right. Your candles turn on your music on all of that stuff. Um, I know some agents will actually in the summertime will actually go ahead of time and put their signs out and then go home and shower or at least change their clothes so that they're not all sweaty and gross. <laughs> I'm going to give you a resource for a guy that will put out signs for you guys on a, on a couple slides. Um, so lights on, drapes, right? Make sure it's comfortable. Uh, turn the turn the, the air conditioning down so it's comfortable. You know, make sure all the toilets are flushed and toilet seats are down. Have your candle, nice music, and then have your your thank you notes for anybody who actually gives you an address when you when they walk through. Here's sign rose. So if you guys want to take a screenshot of that, that is. I think, 50, what is it, 50 bucks for 15 signs? So it's a pretty good deal. We don't want to put out your own signs. Huh? I think that's a great deal. Yeah. So, I mean, I dread putting out my signs someday. It's like, whoa. I know, huh? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's the, for me, that's the worst part of doing open houses is putting out the signs. So everybody good with that? Got got the information? Okay. Yes. All right. Right. We're not going to role play, but on the following pages, um, and in fact, I'll just, oh, well, no, I want to show another slide. So the first um, page eight is increasing traffic. So this is your door knocking script, right? So I'm holding an open house, the Smith's house, blah, 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 from Sunday to three to six as an extra service. Okay. That, that line is important um, to share with the people because we want, we want those people to, to see that you're different. If you door knocked on someone's door and said as an added service and those people have any thought of moving, I'd like to think you'd have an opportunity to at least sit down and be interviewed, right? So you might not be the one that gets the listing, but I'd like to think if you're door knocking and saying the right things that they would be impressed with that. Okay. The next couple pages, page nine, 
uh, welcome the looker. So here's your script when someone comes in the door um, and how to address. So the seller would like to record everyone who's been through the house today. So could you please sign my registry and then have them sign that. And again, they've seen the sign outside that says that um, you're going to be asked to sign in. Okay. Um, and I know some people like to do that digitally. That's okay. If you want to do it digitally and have like a Google doc or even write onto your voice pad, register them there or your KB core. I'm okay with that. Has anybody played with the KB core open house thing? No? Okay. Um, I'm not an expert at it, but I hear the good things I about have that. Sarah. that there's a, um, something you can do with it. Okay, tell us about it, please. The open house app? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. It's pretty easy. It's four or five fields. They fill out name, phone number, address. And I might be confusing KV Cores with Spacio, but it also asks for how they heard about the open house. Um, I actually set up both paper and the app on a tablet because some people don't want to do one or the other. And uh, so I just give people the option. If they put it on paper, then I type it into the app so it automatically syncs into KB Core. Okay. Cool. And then like KB that. Core has an open house plan. So it mm -hmm. automatically sets them up on a smart plan and sets the emails and the, or texts and blah, blah, blah. Cool, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so page 10 is providing relevant information. So once they've toured the home, right? ask the questions and if you've asked them to give feedback now that's the opportunity to take the clipboard back and look at their feedback and engage them a little bit deeper um page 11 let me go ahead and jump to this page actually so page 11 is a flow chart so you know here's your dialogue flow chart so if they're if they're yes i'm looking or no or i'm just looking um i love the script in here that how are you going about finding your perfect home um i know it's kind of small on the screen but this is on page 11 so you guys i would print this out and practice this right role play this and role play the scripts so that when you get these different objections you know how to handle it right um, and that's really what scripts are all about is just how helping us to overcome objections and it makes us look really polished when we know what to say um, okay, so page 12. So here's our closing. So booking your first meeting, have the thank you note, we want to call to confirm. Okay, so if, if they, if they once they say, you know, are you currently in the market? How are you going about finding your perfect home, right? And then close for the appointment. So that's on page 12. Um, let's skip to this. So page 14. Um, these are a little bit more advanced dialogues. So in regards to your next home, and remember we've talked about stacking where you just kind of roll one right after the other and don't give them an opportunity to answer. So either way is effective, either asking the one question and then letting them answer or stacking, okay? Stacking is a little bit more aggressive and some of you might be like, wow, sorry, I can't do that. That's okay. And so just, but it is an advanced tool. So in regards to your next home, is it important that you make an informed, intelligent, intelligent, intelligent decision? Is it important that you take a proactive approach rather than a reactive? Is it important that you get the home you want and more importantly, want the home you get? Is it important that you make a logical decision rather than one based entirely on emotion? If at any point they say yes to this, then we want to go in and close the appointment. They say no. What was our, our affirmation that we had? Um, our core belief is that what? I live in a world of abundance. Okay. We don't want to, you don't want to attract people into your, into your business that are going to suck the life out of you. We want to attract people who are going to be appreciative and respectful of the fact that you are a professional um, and that you get to represent them. So uh, I love this. The reminder is that we have choices and choices are equal action, which creates habit that leads to what shaping our character. And then that leads to our destiny on ultimately what's our legacy, what's on our tombstone at the end of our lives, right? So we all have choices. Okay, so page 15 is another dialogue on, yes, but I'm working with an agent. Okay, so there's that script. Then page 16 is I'm not in the market for a new home. So this is your nosy neighbor. Um, and that's okay, right? We can still add nosy neighbors into our databases, right? To follow up with them. And you never know, nosy neighbors might give you the beat on another property that's coming up for sale, right? <laughs> so not always a bad thing to know the nosy neighbors. Uh, page 17, again, is just another, we're just looking. Um, so we're, we're just looking now, or I don't think we're ready to buy. That could be the, the, the objection that you get, okay? And sometimes people are misinformed. 
Um, Kyle had an open house lead a few years ago that said, you know, I don't think we can buy because we we own a, we were we were told we can't buy a house because we own a house in California. And what it boiled down to is they had been given bad information because the house in California was rented. So it canceled out the mortgage and they absolutely could have bought and they've been renting for years. And so sometimes people, when they say, I don't think we're ready to buy, go a little bit deeper with that. Ask a few probing questions and find out because sometimes people are misinformed. Okay. Um, page 18 is the follow-up dialogue. And so this is the, again, I would use this on video, record yourself and say, hey, it's Remax Professionals. You know, I, kept, uh, I hope I caught, you know, I hope it was great. It was great connecting with you. Dialogue says that I catch you at a good time, which is if they actually answer the phone. Um, but, you know, if you have a phone number, you guys, that's call, call, text, video, text, you know, make sure you take advantage of the fact that you actually got a phone number and we don't uh, not take advantage, but that you you know, follow up appropriately, right? So, because so many leads don't get followed up with appropriately. Um, and then lastly, the last few pages you have are going to be, um, I don't think if I have them up here or not. I don't think I do. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. No, I don't. All right. Then I might have a screenshot up there, but I don't. So page 20 is, this is an example of a, a sign-in sheet. It's pretty basic. Uh, or I'm sorry, it's a feedback form. I like mine better. So if you want the feedback form, um, I will send that to you guys with the surveillance camera. Uh, the other thing that's in here is your follow-up. So this would be just basically like a little spreadsheet you create yourself to put all the leads that you got, where are they at? And that way you, you have a tickler to remind you of, of when I should follow up with them. I will put them in your KB core as opposed to paper so <laughs> and then tag them open house leads so that when you go to do your open house follow-up you know where your leads are at and then 22 is a um, um i'm sorry sample thank you notes and then the last page 23 is actually an intake form um and you know when you set up if you were doing an open house and you set an appointment to follow up with somebody and you handed them a form like this on page 22 is basically a criteria sheet um, your competition isn't doing this. And so we hand something like that that says, hey, this might be helpful for you, Leslie, in your search of your home. Because sometimes, especially second time buyers, like they don't necessarily know what they don't know. First time buyers definitely don't know what they don't know, right? And someone who's mo moving down in size can be stressed for a whole other variety of reasons, right? And so having given them, if you give them a criteria sheet that says, hey, this is going to help you to identify what you want in your home, competition isn't doing it. And so just something to set you apart, um, to give you an advantage, okay? So to recap, I think the big things here are um, your prep, right? What do we do before the open house as far as, you know, marketing ahead of time, door knocking, um, your Facebook stuff? I think that's really critical in order to hold a good open house. Good signage is important. Um, and then a good attitude must, I mean, that's got to be top of right is having a good attitude about i'm going to have an open an open an awesome open house and so watch that clip from uh, the movie where she says i will sell this house today <laughs> it's very inspiring kim don't watch the rest of the movie the rest of the movie is kind of depressing but that that section that scene is amazing so for real estate and also you know you can always go watch modern family and watch you know some phil some philosophy on uh, real estate as well i love him too as a realtor <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, comments, thoughts? Who's going to do an open house this weekend? I know Audrey said she was going to, even though it's hot as Hades out there. I'm doing one. Okay, good, good. All right, awesome. And Leslie, are you going to sit those with Audrey this weekend? Probably not. I, you know, I, I am a big uh, believer in open houses. I've got a lot of business from doing opens and, you know, I'm, I've got a $1.2 million listing from an open, from an open, from an open. What? And it kind of, I, yeah. So I, yeah, open houses are kind of my ticket. So love it. And Kevin, I know you guys have done a lot of, I mean, Rose, his mom has like, that's how she built her business was doing open houses. So would you pop that scene in the chat? 
him. <laughs> All right, you guys can go watch that. So, um, okay, well, if you need anything, reach out. Uh, Thursday is Nate's marketing class. So if you haven't RSVP'd for that, please do. So we know if we have enough breakfast uh, for everybody so that he's going to be going through. And even if you're not farming, it's still going to be a good opportunity. Anytime you can spend an hour with Nate and pick his brain and hear his thoughts about his brilliance in marketing, it's always a good day. So um, that, and then the following week, I am kicking off momentum from the very first class. So uh, if you haven't taken it all the way through and you want to start from the top of the classes, that's happening on Tuesday. And then Thursday is our office meeting. So hard to believe it's already the end of July. So <laughs> unfortunately, a break in the heat next week, according to the news. So, but okay, well, if you guys need anything, please reach out and uh, have a great day. Okay. Thank right, you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.